Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton, and I'm going to help you get that C in your GCSE. This lesson, Inheritance. This topic was suggested by Ashen Page, Zara Malik, and Nathasia Vianca. If there's a topic you'd like me to cover, then just leave a comment below. This is the second half of a two-part video about inheritance. You can watch the first half by clicking just here, or checking the link in the description. It's important that you do have a look at that, because in that first video, I discuss what the meanings of the terms allele and dominant and recessive are, and how that genetic information is passed on from parents to their offspring, and finally, how we can represent that in a Punnett square. This becomes particularly important when we start to consider certain inherited genetic conditions. One of the ones which you need to be aware of is known as polydactyly. That's a condition that causes uh, the growth of extra fingers or extra toes. And it's a dominant allele. That is, it only needs to have been passed on from one parent for it to be expressed in that offspring. That is, for that offspring to grow those extra fingers or toes. The Punnett square for this condition would look something like this. Let's imagine the father carries a dominant allele which we represent with an uppercase P. And the lowercase P, that represents the recessive allele. Now, if the uppercase P is present because it's dominant, that causes the offspring to have polydactyly themselves. And we'll assume that the mother doesn't have the condition at all. So you can see that the mother's two alleles are both lowercase p's and the father's one allele here is an uppercase p and the other one is a recessive lowercase p that doesn't cause polydactyly. And let's put all the combinations together. You can see now that in 50% of the cases, the father is going to pass on his allele and that baby is going to have polydactyly as well. In 50% of the cases, he won't pass on his allele and that baby won't have polydactyly. What's more, that baby, because it's only a dominant gene which causes polydactyly and these recessive genes won't cause it, that baby definitely won't pass it on to their offspring. So if the baby is born without polydactyly, they are definitely not going to have children who have polydactyly themselves. But if that baby is born with polydactyly, then there's a 50-50 chance that their offspring could have polydactyly as well. But the key thing to remember here in this chart is, look at it, how many of the outcomes have the uppercase dominant P which is representing polydactyly occurring? In this case, it's half of them, it's 50%. And on foundation tier, that's as much interpretation of this as you need to be able to do. This type of combination of genetic information is known as a monohybrid cross. And let's look at another example, this time cystic fibrosis. Now, cystic fibrosis is caused by a recessive allele. That means that the child has to get that allele from both parents in order for them to develop cystic fibrosis. The thing which is a little bit tricky though is that those parents may not be aware that they carry the recessive allele because if they also carry the dominant allele, which doesn't cause cystic fibrosis, then they won't have cystic fibrosis. So a person could be a carrier for the recessive cystic fibrosis allele without being aware that they're a carrier for that allele. Let's look at the Punnett square and see how this combines and see what we get. And let's assume that we've got a father who has the recessive cystic fibrosis allele and a dominant allele which doesn't cause cystic fibrosis. And let's assume that the mother also has a recessive allele which causes cystic fibrosis and has that dominant allele. Now, neither the mother nor the father will have cystic fibrosis. They'll have no symptoms, and unless they've had some sort of genetic test to test for this particular allele, which most people don't have, then they won't be aware that they're a carrier of this allele. But let's see how we combine that information. So you can see that in three out of the four cases, we don't have two recessive alleles and we need both recessive alleles, one from the mother and one from the father, in order for that child to develop cystic fibrosis. It's only in this final case where we get the recessive allele from both the mother and the father. So it's only one out of four, 25% of the time or quarter of the time, where cystic fibrosis is expressed and where the child will develop cystic fibrosis. 
The final thing you need to be aware of is that the embryo can be screened for inherited diseases such as cystic fibrosis and polydactyly early on in the pregnancy and the parents can then make a decision about whether or not to continue with the pregnancy. I hope that video really helps you. If you want to check how well you understood, then try the snap quiz. The link is right here and it'll also be in the description along with all the other links for this video. If you want to check out my other videos, then click right here. If you want to download the free app I've made to help you with your revision, then you can click right here. If you want to subscribe to my channel, then you can click right here. Don't forget to leave likes, and if you go to the comments, you can give me feedback and let me know which topics you'd like me to cover next. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and thanks very much for watching.